If Kratos were a real person, he'd be the type of dude to donate half of his check to e-girls on Twitch. Did you just donate me $20,000 to own my ex-boyfriend? Wow. God of War is a series that I haven't played. Despite growing up on PlayStation, somehow I've never beaten a God of War title. And since lately we've just been playing really old games on this channel, it just kind of makes sense that we play a game from 2005 at this point. By the way, I'm pretty sure I understand why this game is touted as a classic. She looks damn good. The amount of boobs in this game is just ridiculous. Maybe they still do this in the new God of Wars and it's considered kind of a trope of the series at this point, but like I said, I haven't played any of these games. So I was pretty surprised that you see a boob on average about every five minutes for the first half hour of this game. Anyways, I can't show or talk about that too much because, you know. You're gonna hear me complain that there's not too much of a challenge to this game. Yeah, I played it on easy. So later on in the video when I start saying that, just keep that in the back of your mind. The game starts with a cutscene of Kratos uh, jumping off a cliff. Cause the gods forsaken him and like made fun of his gross feet or something. Nobody likes me anymore. It's these stupid feet. And then the game smacks us with one of those three weeks earlier title cards. Title three weeks earlier. So, spoiler alert, uh, Kratos doesn't die until the end of this game, which is something we can look forward to, I guess? The game begins on a boat where we fight a bunch of, um, yeah, I don't know what these are, like gray soldier things. This part of the game is basically just the tutorial, which is kind of a bummer, considering these Hydras are one of the best boss fights in this whole game and they happen within the first 15 minutes. Killing enemies in this game isn't very hard. Kratos just kinda dances around like a ballerina while these swords chained to his wrists flutter around his body, like he's doing poi at an EDM festival. So yeah, I did enjoy watching his hips rhythmically gyrate around while he just slayed. And it's not even hard to do. Fighting in this game is super easy. You just mash buttons. The difficult part is the puzzles. In the first level, you have to push a crate up the deck of a ship so you can get onto the top deck at the end. However, there's these archers that shoot the box and it explodes, so you need to start all over. Mother! Oh my god. I'm really trying to limit my cussing, but fuck this part of the game. It took me far too long to get this right and almost led me to reconsider making this video entirely. This is... Bullshit. As I was already stuck and the game just started. But this wasn't the only aggravating part I experienced. The game also introduces this balance beam mechanic where Kratos has to walk on thin surfaces or whatever. And if you fall off, you have to spam X to pull yourself back up. I was really hoping this was only gonna be present in the first level and wouldn't be recurring throughout the game. I was wrong, but whatever, that's fine. Cause I'll only have to deal with them for the rest of the game lovely. So after a lot of dancing at a boat party and pushing boxes like this game is an Amazon warehouse simulator, we meet Poseidon, the god of the sea. God of the sea. And he asks us, a regular old little guy, to kill the Hydra, a massive sea monster. Which, what? You're literally the god of the sea and you're asking us to kill a sea monster. Why can't you kill this thing? So Poseidon sucks. Fine, I'll just swim there. He's a coward that likes to send mortals on death missions, but he did give us his powers, which is good, because now we can go like super scion and just electrocute everything around us. This is by far the best power we get in the whole game, since Zeus just gives us the ability to throw these dinky little lightning bolts. And Aphrodite gives us Medusa's head that we can use to get our enemies uh, stoned. Oh my God, I just realized the Medusas are also topless. Oh God, I'm gonna have to censor all of this. I'm not gonna put the Medusas on screen too much. I don't wanna deal with it. While going through the first level, we find a door with women in distress behind it. But oh no, it's locked. Find the key! Find the key! Cause why would it ever just be open? And the sailor with the key was just eaten by the big Hydra. And since Kratos' biggest superpower is simping, we must delete the sea beast. Again, in my opinion, this is likely the best boss fight in the game, because for the next eight hours, we'll mostly be fighting the same enemies, with slight upgrades, but it's just the same things over and over. Wasn't too hard, just some quick time events. After killing the Hydra, we have to crawl down its throat to get the key out of its belly. Thank the god! 
thought you came back for me. I didn't come back for you. No! Okay, pause. Why is Kratos such a jerk? He could have easily just saved this dude, but instead he chose to be an asshole for like no reason? Maybe it's because the guy didn't have tits. That's probably what it is. I'm Lady Boy. Um. After getting the key, we show up just in time to see the women get slaughtered, before Kratos even had the chance to get out his credit card and donate to their PayPals. Yeah, this is actually super graphic. I'm gonna blur most of this out just to be safe. You know, reasons. Which leads us to another cutscene and oh my god, what the fuck, we get it. This game is rated M, but it seems like the devs are trying to cram nudity down my throat every chance they get. Come back to bed, Kratos. Where was this game when I was going through puberty? Also, quick side note, if you look up all the cutscenes on YouTube, this part of the game is by far the most rewatched part. I wonder why that is. These cutscenes keep alluding to something terrible that Kratos did, that has ever since been haunting him. Dude straight up has demons. This little kid had a demon that wouldn't let him speak. Watch this. After a little panic attack, he talks to Athena. When will you relieve me of these nightmares? Your greatest challenge awaits. Only a mortal trained by a god has a chance at defeating Ares. Complete this final task and the past that consumes you will be forgiven. So the plot of this game is we have to kill the god of war so we can stop having nightmares. Nightmare, 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 nightmare. Yeah, that's not hyperbole. Because we can't sleep through the night without getting spooky dreams, we need to go kill a literal god. You know, I always thought of Kratos as a badass, but so far, I'm not really getting badass vibes. He seems more like a simp with crippling night terrors. Athena tells us that Ares is laying siege on Athens, so that's where we're headed. Not too much happens when we get to the gates of Athens. We kill some monsters, do a little recreational swimming, uh, we force feed some beasts. Here comes the choo-choo train. Oh yeah, we also get the previously mentioned Medusa head from Aphrodite's, which I just love to run around and show everyone, because I'm a psychopath that keeps a severed head in my backpack. Most people are interested. After more fighting and problem solving, we run into the Oracle of Athens. And of course, she's topless. I feel like this game was developed by a bunch of 14 year old boys. Well, that's because you have big jugs. She tells us that if we find her temple, she will show us how to murder a god. That's convenient. After this, we walk up to a vista overlooking Athens and yeah, we're definitely not going to win a fight against a walking skyscraper. We better find that temple. So we continue on our path and fight our way through the streets of Athens, killing more monsters until we get this short cutscene. I'm not really sure what the point of this cutscene is outside of once again, proving to us that Kratos only cares about women. I know who you are. I know what you've done. Monster. Wait. Stay back. Get away from me. Radical feminist. It's fair to say that women pretty much can get whatever they want. After some more disco fighting, we get a cutscene where the Oracle is stolen by Birdman. And of course, we need to save her. But on the way to saving the Oracle, we meet this creepy old homeless guy who tells us he's digging our grave. Fantastic. And despite being told this, Kratos has nothing to say. And when all appears to be lost, Kratos, I will be there to help. likely because he has something else on his mind. So it's right back to saving the Oracle. But before we find her, we must walk on even more balance beams. God, I just love this part of the game. Oh. When we find the Oracle, she's stuck on a rope and we get about a minute to save her. If time runs out, she just falls to her death. But if we get there in time, we just tackle her off the rope. So I guess being tackled to the ground is somehow safer than just falling or something. I mean, you could have just caught her, right? Like, what's going on? But let's not question it. The Oracle reads Kratos' mind and for the first time we see that Kratos had a wife and a child. Or a pet alien, I'm not really sure. Can you guys explain OK Boomer to me? <laughs> it sounds like our wife didn't like all the violent video games we were playing. How much is enough, Kratos? When will it end? And we were having marital issues because of it, but I'm sure we'll learn more about that later. The Oracle calls us a weak-ass bitch. Stay out of my head! 
and says that if we want to kill Ares, we need to go find Pandora's box that's in a desert, in a temple, on a titan's back that is just endlessly roaming around out there in the desert of death or bodies or something sad. I forget the name of it. Now, this sounds like an epic journey, but because it's a desert, it was mostly just this. A whole lot of running around in a sandstorm. Pocket sand! <laughs> but after some more fighting and puzzles, we blow a big horn. Which is somewhat a metaphor for this game. And like a puppy, the titan comes running so we can get to the temple on its back. It felt like a majority of this game takes place in this temple, trying to get to Pandora's box. Uh, but the most important part of this level was one of my friends fixing the graphic settings on my, um, PS2 that made the game go from this to this. We also get a new weapon, but yeah, I didn't really use it very much. Instead, I just stuck to my whippy blades. So much hotter. And also, I was already too deep into upgrading them. Yeah, when you get those red orbs, you can use them to upgrade your weapons and abilities. I haven't mentioned that yet, but it's not like a crazy deep system. It's pretty straightforward. Red orb makes you more strength or something like that. But the only things I really upgraded were Poseidon's powers and my whippy blades. I really can't remember what those are actually called, and I should probably look it up before I continue recording. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that. Look at the level of effort I put into this. And after going through even more puzzles and fighting, we get another cutscene that once again reiterates that Kratos was a jerk, and that he just loved doing war stuff. Except this time, we get a little more information. Ares, destroy my enemies, and my life is yours. Yeah, so we find out that instead of dying, Kratos sold his soul to the devil, or Ares. So I guess this means that this guy is your master, Kinky. But that's all we get from this one, so I guess we're gonna have to wait a little longer before we see what else is going on. So we continue on with fighting the same enemies, puzzling, and killing everyone that has a penis. Save me from this barbarian! Please! Please! Yep, you should have been a woman, bro. Ooh, we get a trident that feels like chewing five gum. That was two gum jokes. Hey kiddo, I got hubba bubba. <laughs> Sorry. But the trident allows us to swim, and all that really means is that there's now another level of complexity to the puzzles. Cool, that's great. After some more dungeon crawling, we get another boss fight, finally. We fight this big robot minotaur thing. Not sure exactly what it is, but it's definitely a boss. People say I am the best boss. At this point, it occurred to me how lacking the game is in terms of big, unique boss fights. There was the big Hydra at the very beginning, and now this horse bot, but I've been playing for hours, and I thought this game was going to be chock full of big, epic fights. And instead, I just keep fighting the same topless snake ladies and different variations of zombie soldiers. I don't know. I guess I'm just mad because these two boss fights were cool and unique, and I feel like things like this are just too few and far apart in this game. But moving on, uh, what else happens around here? Oh, uh, we meet Hades, and his mouth makes me uncomfortable. Oh, no. He gives us a new power that, again, we hardly ever use, and then we solve a ridiculously large and tedious ring puzzle that, for some reason, kept crashing my PlayStation. I played this on a PlayStation. <laughs> In case it was up for debate. In the next cutscene we get, Kratos tells a random bird person that he's breaking up with Ares. Return to your master. Tell the god of war I am his no longer. So sad. They were such a cute couple. It just came out of nowhere for me. I even told him my parents thought he was going to propose to me. After this, we continue murdering and solving puzzles, including this puzzle. Oh man, was this the worst? After pulling this lever, you only have so much time before these floor spikes release. It's an instant one shot, so we need to drag this box over here in order to jump up onto this ledge. This took me far too many attempts and probably took a few weeks off my life. Still, it's not the worst part of this game. We're going to get to that soon. Right before getting Pandora's box, we get a cutscene that finally fills out the rest of the story. Kratos killed his family. And now he has scary dreams about it. Yeah. I don't really have much sympathy for this guy. I mean, Kratos just kind of sucks. This guy sucks. Anyways, after this ridiculously frantic fight on moving platforms, we finally get Pandora's box. 
This part was kind of funny because like we get this big epic box and we get this big epic cutscene, and then the game follows all this up by having you just watch Kratos slowly drag this box around for like a solid minute. But then cutscene. So little Spartan, you've recovered Zeus's precious box, but you will not live long enough to see it opened. I will see to that. Goodbye, Spartan. You will rot in the depths of Hades for all eternity. Yeah, this one's pretty badass. You get one shot by your ex-lover from like miles away. But after this, we watch a cutscene that once again is pretty much all the same shit we already know. But we do learn that Kratos is white because he's covered in the ashes of his dead family. This is a subtle nod to the fact that Kratos is voiced by a black man, despite having the complexion of a vampire. Okay, maybe I don't know what a subtle nod is, but whatever. But yeah. Kratos is super dead, and now we're in hell, or Hades, same thing. Remember the guy that Kratos didn't help at the beginning of the game? Well, thanks Zeus he did that, cause we run into him again. You again? Oh. And he's kinda the reason Kratos was able to resurrect from the dead by battling his way out of hell. So, praise be to Key Guy. This whole level was designed to piss me off. You know what pisses me off more than anything? Those so there's these rotating pillars with blades on them. Yeah, they're totally the type of thing you'd find in hell. These suck ass. But don't worry about the enemies though. Even though they're now glowing, it's just the same mobs you've been fighting all game. They just reskinned them. However, this thing is my new enemy. This rotating column of blades is the worst thing I have ever had to conquer. I cried. I admit it, I cried. <laughs> But thank God for motivational posters. Through the virtue of raw perseverance, I eventually overcame this after a half hour. This was more difficult than all six years of college. You know, a lot of people go to college for seven years. I know, they're called doctors. I'm not a doctor, by the way. It just took me a few respawns to pass all the required classes. You know how it is. I thought the Hades level would for sure end with a big boss fight. I mean, we're in hell after all. There's probably a bunch of big demons in there to fight. It doesn't. Of course. You kind of just kill a few mobs, pass some skill checks, and then climb a rope up into the sky where you climb out of the grave that that dirty old hobo was digging earlier in the game. Yeah, I guess you never really can tell what people are up to, huh? I have crippling depression. Anyways, now we retrace our steps through the same level we completed earlier, except now it's in total ruin. We run through the same mobs we have faced all game until finally we get some face time with our ex-boyfriend Ares. Zeus! This is one of the more confusing cutscenes in the game. So I guess we chuck a lightning bolt at Pandora's box to free it from Ares' hold. But what happens after this isn't shown. And the next thing we see is Kratos standing at the box. Like, okay, so many questions. Did he really not notice that Kratos hit the box? I mean, he's a god, he should be pretty alert of what's going on around him. And if he did notice, why did he let Kratos climb down a cliff and run hundreds of yards over to a super box that literally turns him into a fucking god? I don't know, I'm just so confused by this, it makes me mad. But anyways, now that we open Pandora's box, we go from 5'11 to 6 foot. Hi, I'm Adam. Now I am 5'11 and a quarter. And then Ares turns into a spider thing, I guess? Okay, I don't know much about Greek mythology. I don't know if this is like a thing from it or like the devs just thought it would be cool, but I didn't see it coming. The boss fight wasn't too bad, again, mainly because I played on easy. But halfway through the fight, Ares sucks us into his hands? Not sure exactly what's happening here, but we get teleported to space where we have to stop ourselves from killing our family. That is one hell of a sentence. But yeah, we have to fight dozens of versions of ourselves while making sure our family's health doesn't reach zero. Yeah, I'm not really sure what is better about this fight. Kratos violently swinging his blades right next to his defenseless family while somehow just not hitting them at all. Or how Kratos can heal his family by stopping in the middle of battle to give him a hug. Wholesome. Cute. But after you defeat yourself, it turns out you don't actually even save your family. The whole thing is a hallucination, and at the end of it, Ares strips you of your magic and your cool disco blades, leaving you with no real way to fight back. <clears throat> Except for this extremely conveniently placed sword. Yep, yeah, let's just thank God again, right? My crew is big and it keeps 
getting bigger. That's because Jesus Christ is my... Because of this, the second part of the fight is way more difficult. You have to use a sword that you haven't used all game, and really the only way to do meaningful damage is through quick time events. A quick time event you'll likely have to watch a dozen times before you finish him. It's not as exciting the tenth time I've seen it. And after pressing circle, 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 sick combo, we finally kill Ares. But now that we killed Ares, the gods will take away our nightmares, and Kratos can finally get a good night's sleep without being woken up in a panic. Athena, rid me of the memories that haunt me still. We promised your sins would be forgiven, and so they are. But we never promised to take away your nightmares. <laughs> yeah. Get wrecked, loser. The gods don't take away our bad dreams. But maybe Kratos should just go see a therapist or get like a dream catcher. That's what they're for, right? And with this bad news, we're led back to the first cutscene of the game, where Kratos jumps off a cliff, giving us exposition as to what we saw at the beginning. But instead of dying, Jesus takes the wheel and offers him a new job as god of war since Ares was fired for gross misconduct. Ares' tactics were brutal. His path of destruction had to be stopped. But now there is an empty throne in Olympus, and a new god of war is needed. But honestly, is Kratos a better pick? The guy has proven himself to be an asshat over and over. But here we are, getting promoted to a god, so now we can run through a poorly rendered gold castle where we press X to sit and then become the god of war. Which is probably why they named the game God of War. I mean, that makes sense. Some very deep, introspective analysis. And that's the original God of War. Is it a tale born out of Greek mythology about a mortal man overcoming the wrath of gods in order to avenge his family? Or is it a story about domestic violence brought on by a gay affair between two soldiers that were at battle together? I don't know, you tell me. All I know is that the real hero of this game is Key Guy. That guy fu- If you believe in Jesus, make sure to subscribe. Wow, what a great video.